Round out five rounds headlines with this. Uh, coach John Kavanaugh, uh, who of course uh, most famously is Conor McGregor's coach, recently spoke to BBC Sports. Uh, here are two quotes that were very interesting from that. Conor had a lot going on in his life. A lot of stuff outside of fighting uh, was going on in his life and he seems to be getting the hang of all that. Now he's back training almost every day and I think 2018 will be another big year for us. Exactly what that is, I don't know yet, but the plan is forming. Another quote, I'll be pushing very hard for him to fight in mixed martial arts next the boxing was a nice detour from what we've done but mixed martial arts is my passion so if i have anything to do with it he'll be in the octagon this year rejoice sound the sirens brett mcgregor (laughs) mma yeah great when when get him in here (laughs) you're not buying it it's like crying wolf right you're like come on show us paperwork i want to see a literal contract signed and tweeted before i get excited no man i'm i'm buying it i i connor was always coming back to the cage he was going to do he was going to do the ufc before he went off and did another boxing fight we've known that john so when when is he going to do it you know it's a good sign that john's saying he's in the gym regularly but I believe Dana White when he says uh, August, hopefully August, maybe September, you know, that 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 timeline continues to be pushed back. Originally, it was hopefully by the end of the year. Then it was uh, maybe March. Now it's oh, sometime this summer. Now he mentioned the word September. That ain't summer anymore, right? That's technically fall. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get him in there. Um, but I think it's going to happen. Like I said, right off the bat, I think he's going to fight twice in 2018. Maybe that's just me trying to be optimistic. But uh, I think Khabib, I think Khabib Nurmagomedov is going to fight Tony Ferguson. I think it's going to happen in April. And I'm not sure if it's going to be for the interim title or it's going to be for the undisputed title. And the UFC strips McGregor. I know that sounds wacky to everybody out there and that they would never do it. And it is a difficult decision, but I'm not ruling that out. I could see them saying, hey, Tony Ferguson has won how many? Ten fights in a row? Eleven fights in a row? Khabib's won eight or nine now in, in the UFC and 25 overall. This has to be for the undisputed mm-hmm. title. Connor, we have to strip you. We have to move move this along. Um, I think that happens in April. And, well, then what happens, man? What happens if they do strip Connor? Then he's not even the champion. Then he's not even obligated to fight he's the winner the money of that. Then he, just, then he just fights Diaz again, which we all thought was going to happen anyway. <laughs> so, interesting yes. stuff. But I hope, I mean, this is a good sign that John says that it's not earth shattering news. And that's why we didn't lead the podcast off with it. It's the fifth headline, not the first headline, but Hey, it's good to hear anything that says he's in the gym. Yeah. That's positive, positive news. Maybe, maybe I had one too many sirens in that case. No, Pro- man, I, I understand. I understand your, uh, <laughs> your excitement because it's been a while. I mean, the guy has yeah. not fought in MMA since November of 2016. Uh. That is disappointing. So do the sirens all you want, man. I, they, they're appropriate here. <laughs> <laughs> the title fight has been set. UFC 222, Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena. It will be Max Holloway defending against Frankie the Answer Edgar, fresh off of this announcement. Frankie Edgar joins us here on the ESPN 5 Rounds podcast. Uh, Frankie, thank you very much for joining us. And I want to start with this. Uh, just tell us about the process of finally getting this fight made official uh, and the back and forths as I guess you get out of your car. All good now. Yeah, no, uh, we you know, we, we kind of uh, expected this fight to go down, you know, after getting hurt and, uh, you know, uh, just was waiting for a date. So I didn't know if it was going to be April or March, and it uh, turns out March 3rd is the, the, the date for it. How happy are you and how relieved are you that this fight is, is finally happening through everything that's happened in the last year? Yeah, I'm excited. You know, this definitely could have went a different way. Uh, you know, me getting injured uh, was definitely unfortunate. And, um, you know, he, he obviously had Aldo had to go in there. He had to go in there again with Aldo. He had to get that win for me and him to line it up. And, you know, other contenders are trying to vie for the title, but it seemed like everything turned out the way it was supposed to. And, you know, here we are, March 3rd, we're going to get down. Let me ask you this. Uh, Max Holloway has gotten a lot of praise in 2017, certainly deservedly so. And many outlets labeled him uh, Fighter of the Year. Uh, how does that sit with you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth it, man. He's kind of been going and, you know, just running through everyone. You know, what he did to Aldo's last two fights is very impressive. Um, you know, he's a young kid. He's got a bright future. And, uh, yeah, he, he's living up to, to the champion status that he has right now. 
Frankie, you said that this could have gone another way. Could, could it have really? I mean, you know, Brian Ortega went out and he got a great win against Cub Swanson. Don't get me wrong. That was a fantastic performance. And then there was, there was some talk a little bit about, you know, maybe him jumping ahead. But even then, he himself said, well, I can't jump Frankie Edgar. That's Frankie Edgar. And Dana White put that to bed real quickly. I mean, were you that nervous about it or did it seem like it was always yours? I feel like it was always mine, but, you know, I've been in this case before where, you know, I thought I was getting a title fight. I, mean, I was told I was getting a title fight, you know, by Dan and Lorenzo himself, uh, you know, at one point, and then the next night that uh, those plans got ruined. So, you know, you're really never too sure until you sign that bout agreement. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, you know, you mentioned the rematch, obviously. Max goes in and defeats Jose a second time. Were, did you pick up anything? What, I mean, you're, you're looking at this through a different perspective than we are. What was the difference in the second fight from the first fight, if there was any? Uh, you know, I don't think there was that much of a difference between the first and second. You know, um, I, I think Holloway just, you know, believed himself a little more, so was able to get to get get on Aldo. I think a little quicker. Um, but, you know, first fight, first round, first rounds of both fights. I thought Aldo, you know, could have won, especially in the first round. I think he won second round, you know, possibly because he kind of came out guns blazing. But you know, I don't think he learned from the first fight. He really didn't, uh, you know, mind his gas, and he seemed like he got a little gas. And, and Max, you know, he just pours it on. So. He was able to do that again the second time around. Yeah. In my eyes, Max does a lot of things well, but I think one thing that really sticks out to me, and I think a lot of people are, would agree with me on this, is, and you mentioned it, the, the confidence level. I mean, sometimes we take that for granted. We think, you know, guys are champions and, and they have that confidence. It, does he, is he riding a little bit of a different confidence level, though, because of the 10 fight win streak um, and just the run that he's been on? Is that something that's sort of unique to him, or is that something that, you know, you've seen in other opponents before? I'm sure, you know, when, when it has a way of just making you believe in your own hype, you know, and, you know, the way he's been winning, I mean, that's just only going to grade or that confidence, you know, each time out. And, uh, you know, he seems to be doing that, um, especially he's young, too. As he gets older, you get more confidence in, in just uh, in just your own skin. Hey, that's a good point. You are 36 years old. He's 26. Who has the advantage in that? Uh, I guess that would depend who you had. Depend who you had. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't feel old. I don't feel slower. Um, I definitely have the experience, uh, you know, but he is a younger guy. I mean, you know, this is definitely a, a young man's sport, but I, I think I'm uh, I'm beating that clock a little bit myself. So, Frankie, when, uh, you know, as you've uh, gone on in your UFC career, you're saying you're 36 years old, what sort of changes uh, have you done uh, in training or, or what are you doing? Is it like a smarter versus more kind of thing? Like what kind of changes have you made over the years to uh, adapt and become, you know, the veteran fighter that you are? You know, I, I don't think I've made too many changes. You know, I've always trained hard. I spar, you know, rather hard. Um, I've learned to cut out the fat, I guess, cut out the unnecessary stuff. Yeah, uh, but you know, to me, if I if I was doing something at 26, if I can't do it at 36, that's a problem. So I try to kind of keep the same workload. Uh, definitely a little smarter about it. You know, sometimes I'd, uh, you know, be a little over, you know, I'd overtrain at times. I, I think I've learned not to do that. But um, but I'm still training hard. I'm still trying to push my limits. Still trying to find that that same gauge every camp to make sure that I know I can, you know, if I'm doing it in training, I can do it in the cage. Obviously, you'll be talking about Max a lot over the coming months. Uh, before we transition to that completely, I did want to ask your opinion on Aldo. He's a guy that, that you fought twice. He's a guy who's been, you know, I think it's very safe to call him a legend in the sport. Um, you know, he's been a little disgruntled. He didn't get that Conor McGregor rematch back when he thought he should have. He's talked about, you know, wanting to finish up his contract with the UFC and get out of the sport. What do you make of uh, where Jose Aldo is at in his career, just as, you know, kind of a, an analyst and a, and a guy in that division? Yeah, you know, I think he's got to look at himself in, in the mirror and see if he really wants to, you know, go at it. Um, I'm not saying that his last performance looked like uh, he didn't, but, you know, I mean, there was rumblings, I think, even before me and him were going to fight, that he didn't want to fight anymore. He was thinking about retiring. So, I know, when you have one foot in the door, one foot out, that's just tough to really make that full commitment. And I don't know if that's what he's struggling with right now. Um, but he is a legend, you know. He's done so many, you know, he right now um, the best featherweight to do this, you know, based on his credentials, uh, you know, at least at this point. But, um yeah, you know, he's got to really decide whether he wants to do this or not. Hey, Frankie, um, you – oh, sorry, Brett. I just wanted to ask, since you have your an an analyst hat on, this weekend uh, you you've recently fought Jeremy Stevens. He's facing Duho Choi. Any thoughts on that fight? Uh, man, that's just going to be a barn burner. You know, two guys that, that sling it, that, that love slinging it, love throwing heat. Uh, that's a tough – that's a pick em fight. You know, and guys that are that, are that uh, I don't want to say reckless, but sometimes they can get reckless. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Frankie, you mentioned, uh, you know, having one foot out of the door, one foot in. 
you, you've never had a problem with that, but what's the closest you've ever come to that? What's like, you know, when you, when you're chasing Conor McGregor and that fight didn't materialize, or, you know, when you were mentioning a, a Lorenzo and Dana are telling you you're getting a title fight and then you don't, um, whether it was some injury or, or whatever was, what's the closest you've ever had to thinking, uh, Maybe I am, you know, one foot out out the door here a little bit. Has that ever even come close to happening? No, I don't think it ever come close to happening. But my lowest part of my career, where I was like second guess myself, was when I lost those three title fights in a row. Mm. Um, you know, they were all pretty much razor close decisions, and you know, it was just real disheartening, man. You know, put heart and soul into something and expecting it to happen. You know, I I don't train for these fights and go in these fights saying, ah, you know, I did my best. I go in there thinking I'm going to win every time, and you know, when you lose close ones like that, that definitely. Uh, that puts a damper on things, and um, you know that that was a tough part of my career. But you know, being able to bounce back from that definitely taught me a lot of lessons. 